in this video we're going to look at the last of the groups really that feature in this period of US expansion and that group is the Native Americans and in this video I'd like to look at how the USA systematically tried to remove the Native Americans from the East and I've purposely used the word systematically because this was a plan and it was done on a grand scale and at the huge cost of the Native Americans lives and culture and in this video I'd like to look at how that happened. Now as the USA expanded and settlers moved west some tribes in particular in the north just moved further inland away from the new settlements but in the southeast there was a very different picture that happened and in the southeast the five tribes the Cherokee, the Choctaw, the Creek the Chicksaw and the Seminole tribes were pretty much hemmed in as slavery grew up around them and these five tribes who are often known as the five civilized tribes what happens to them is uh, quite horrific in this period and I'd like to look at how they were systematically tried to be removed from the southeast by the US government between really 1790 and 1840 so let's start at the start of the story in 17 really in the 1790s President Washington was president and Washington first decided that what he was going to do was he was going to try an experiment of what he called civilizing the Native Americans. Now Washington himself saw the Native Americans as biologically equal but he saw their society as inferior to his own white society. So he tried to persuade the Native Americans to become more civilized and live like white people. Now I'm hoping you're sitting there thinking that's quite a racist idea because it is and lots of historians like Vine Deloria who is a Native American scholar who's pictured here have rightly said that that was hugely degrading to those people because it implies that those people weren't civilized before that's not true they just had a very different culture and tradition to the white settlers who are coming in but Washington's plan was to basically try and make those Native Americans like white people and to an extent that plan does work in some places so some white Americans uh, work with certain tribes and this man here is known as Benjamin Hawkins and Hawkins moved really into the Creek region and he was a plantation owner and Hawkins learns the language of the Creek Indians and he tries to learn from them and he tries to help them learn white American culture and some Creeks do that and you can see here some Creeks living in what we'd now really refer to I suppose as white settler houses. Another tribe, the Cherokees, also tried to fit into white culture and in 1825 they even built their own capital city and that capital city was built on a very similar plan and a very similar scale to Washington. And the Choctaws, the Chickasaws and the Seminoles also opened schools and churches and together those five tribes become known as the five civilized tribes and to an extent this idea that the Native Americans become more like white Americans does work but not with everybody and not all the tribes followed that policy of becoming like whites and some actively resisted it and in 1814 the Creeks and the Seminoles actually went to war against the settlers in the southeast and that was a brutal war, sometimes known as the Creek War, sometimes known as the Red Stick War. And in that war, the Native Americans were defeated. And they were defeated and they were led, they were defeated by the white American army. And that army was led by Andrew Jackson, who becomes president later on. And I know that we've come across in previous videos. And as a result of that, war the Creeks give up 23 million acres of their land to the whites so how are the US government systematically removing the Native Americans well they're doing it through a policy of trying to make them civilized and they're doing it through war now this then really brings us up to 1830 and in 1830 Andrew Jackson who we've come across in previous videos who was trying to promote slavery became president and Andrew Jackson 
didn't want to civilize the tribes. He didn't want to civilize the Native American tribes. In fact, what he wanted was to remove them completely so cotton planters could move into their land. And in 1830, he gets the Congress to pass a law. And that law is the Indian Removal Act. And the Indian Removal Act basically said that they were going to remove those five Native American tribes completely from the region of the southeast and they were going to give them their own new territory in the west. Now funnily enough you can see it on this map here that territory was hundreds of miles away from their uh, current lands and if you were asked to just move house and move everything your entire business, your culture, your tradition, your people, hundreds of miles to a new region. You can understand why the Native American tribes were appalled by this. This was really a quite horrendous policy of forcing the movement of people out of here into the West, where at this point the white settlers were not. So the 1830 Removal Act is probably one of the most important turning points in that idea about the US conflicting with Native Americans because this is the forced removal of these people. Now undeniably and unsurprisingly the Native Americans resisted this and the Cherokee, the Seminole and the Creeks all resist the 1830 Removal Act. The Cherokees themselves decide to take a legal route in terms of their resistance. So they take the state of Georgia to the Supreme Court saying that their rights have been um, affected, their rights have been defeated. And although the judges do agree that the Cherokee had rights, in the end the judges agree with the US government's decision and say that the US government knew what was best. And so the Cherokees and their resistance were defeated. The Seminoles start start a war and that war lasts from 1835 to 1842 and in 1842 the US government invite the Seminole chief in for peace talks. That peace talks were a complete lie and it was a trick and he was jailed and those, that war ends and so the Seminole resistance ends. The Creeks decide to instead to take revenge on the white settlers who moved into their land. They stole the livestock and they stole crops. They steal crops from the white settlers. Some Creek even commit murder and arson. But forces eventually stop that resistance as well. And sadly, none of that resistance really works. And many of these Native American tribes give up and follow the trails over to the new Indian Territory that they've been given in the West. Following Andrew Jackson's law, they actually decide they're going to take this up because they realise that resistance is not going to work. They have no other choice but to actually just give up and follow those trails. Now, one of the last tribes to really move west though was the Cherokee. And most of the Cherokee people had refused to move west. But in 1838, the US Army forced the remaining 18,000 Native Americans to march west. And that march over hundreds of miles was not pleasant. And it was horrific. And over 4,000 of the Cherokee of the 18,000 die on that march because of cold, hunger, or disease and the march for the Cherokee people becomes known as the Trail of Tears and the Trail of Tears is one of those key examples that you need to know and remember because it shows the extent that the US were trying to crush and remove these indigenous people to North America. So let's go back to the question that we started with this video with how did the USA systematically remove the Native Americans from the East? Well by 1838, Andrew Jackson's government had forced over 46,000 Native Americans to leave their lands. 25 million acres of land where they'd once lived was given over to white settlement and to slavery. And slavery grew in the, that southeast region, as we've seen in previous videos. So how did the US government remove the Native Americans from the east? Well, they did it in three ways. 
they did it through government policy and whether that was the policy of trying to force them to be civilized whether that was the policy of the indian removal act government policy and law was one way that they tried to remove the native americans secondly it was through violence and whether that was defeating the native americans in war or forcing them on marches like the trail of tears violence was a second key element of this and lastly and unsurprisingly if you've watched some of the previous videos it was also a racist ideology and the u.s systematically removed the native americans because they saw them as lesser beings they saw them as lesser beings they thought that they had a right to their land and as a result that racist ideology leads them into creating government policy leads them into violence in terms of war and unfortunately by the really 1840 the native americans have been removed from the east